TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy May Edition with your host, Pablo Gunner, the Ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about everything that is nerdy that we re watched, read, viewed, checked out, played that happened in the month of Mayo. So, which is a lot. I have a whole list. If you've seen our list that we post, it's, there's a lot of stuff. So Bad Batch Finale, we're going to cover that. TP Bond on Netflix, going to cover that. Fall Guy, we have a review of that that uh, Slay J did, so you can check that out. Star Wars Tales of the Empire, we'll talk about that. Let's see, what else? Blood of Zeus, Season 2 on Netflix, I'll cover that. Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes came out, we didn't see that. But you know what, we've been checking out Doctor Who. That's been pretty crazy, so we'll talk about that for sure. Ghost of Shima, I didn't beat it, but I've been playing it, and it just gets better and better, so I'll talk about that. Also, there's uh, Thelma the Unicorn on Netflix. Pokemon Horizons the Series Part 2 on Netflix, I'll talk a little bit about that. X-Men 97, of course, and Star Trek Discovery. Kaiju number 8, Demon Slayer. Oh, sweet. Let's do it. So, let's go ahead and start with first... Bad Batch finale on Disney+. Plus. So, if you're new here, for our grade scale, for most of our stuff, because most stuff is streaming, it's going to be a must-see, must-stream. Then it's just going to be check it out as the mid-grade, and then the low-grade is going to be pass. Now, if you can't stream it, then it's going to be probably a buy, and then rent, if there's a rent or some form of that, since there's, we don't really, you know, you could try it, I guess, you know, like, which is pretty much Game Pass-type services, right? Or Gamefly. Yeah, 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 you could do that. Let's go into Bad Batch Finale. Did you watch it? No. It hurts me. It hurts me that people are not watching, not watching Bad Batch. I don't know if it's a, I, I don't know what it is. What, what is the reason you're not watching it? I've never really watched everything Star Wars. I've watched a handful of things. Like you don't like Clone Wars? Like were you not that I, into I didn't Clone really Wars? like Clone Wars. But you did like Rebels, right? Yeah, Rebels was good. Clone Wars just there's too much shit to get through to get to the good. That first season's pretty rough. Second one, yeah. So now that's now that we've covered that, I, I think a big part of it is people don't like animation. It is a Clone Wars continuation essentially. Filoni's doing his best to try to continue Clone Wars as long as possible, essentially. I love it. The finale was awesome. Like, the last few episodes were, were superb. I did just... Those ones, they just flowed. And it was, it was really great. I will say, they kind of built up the idea that this secret person that was hunting them, this, this clone, like Clone X or whatever they were calling him, they built up that it was tech. He was doing things that were like tech. He was saying things that tech would say. But then they never revealed his identity. Like, there was even a perfect part where when he died, he slumped over and his helmet easily could have fallen off. And they could have revealed that he was or was not tech. Which would have been a great moment to find out if he was or was not. They also had a line in there about, oh yeah, why don't we call Rex for backup? And they could have done that. So that there would have been this clone rebellion happening there that they also built up and they never did it. And I'm like, are they going to do it at some point? Because this wasn't it. So those were like the two most disappointing things. As well as the fact that like when Omega like they did this time jump and Omega's like older. She's like an adult now or she's at least teenaged. Like I said, 18 probably. So an adult. She goes off on her own, it would have been nice for all of the Bad Batch to see her off, you know, because she goes to join the Rebellion. That was, those were, like, the most disappointing things, but besides that, like, it was awesome, it was epic, it was crazy, everything was superb, like, it just flowed, and it was just so great, and like I said, it's hard to say, like, oh, it's perfect, it wasn't perfect, but it's near perfect, like, it's as much as they could with the time that they had. It's definitely a binge, it's more of a binge than it is, I'm a hardcore you can't say I'm not a hardcore. If you consider yourself a hardcore, you, you have to watch it. You have to watch Bad Batch. It's phenomenal. And it's definitely, for me, and if you're hardcore, it's a must-see. I guess not everyone, but it's still definitely, I would say, it's still worth checking out. Let's move on to the next thing. TP Bond is an anime on Netflix, and it stands for Time Patrol, and then Bond is this character. I actually did not like the animation at all starting off. But it's about this high school kid, and he ends up, like, getting recruited into this time patrol force. 
that they essentially stop people from dying that it's not going to mess up the timeline if they live, but it's like a horrible death. Like one of them is there's this lady that was going to die in a flood because she was expecting her son to come home from the war and he missed the bus or whatever for whatever reason. Holy snipey! Late again, Tommy? You're pathetic. Shut up, Richard. <laughs> so then they have they find a way to save her. Like stuff like that. And it's just like random missions like that. I didn't finish it, so it's hard for me to say like that it's whether or not fully, but I think it's from what I saw, it's worth checking out to see it's for you. The animation is weird. Like, I warmed up to it just because the story was interesting. But even still, I was like, this is still weird animation. It's worth checking out. Let's move on to the next thing, which is Star Wars Tales of the Empire. Did you check that out? No. Dude, you're killing me. This one was a uh, backstory. Did you watch uh, um, Ahsoka? Yeah. Okay. So you know Morgan Elsbeth, right, from Ahsoka? Yeah. She, it was her backstory. So that's... It gives you more into her backstory as to, like, why or how she got to where she is. And then... Do you know of uh, Barris Ophi? Or Offi? I don't think I do. She was a fallen Jedi. She just... It's her story of, like, how she became an Inquisitor and then... Also, how she turned away from the Inquisitors and turned on the Inquisitors. So it wasn't really fully of Tales of the Empire. It was more like half of it was kind of Tales of the Empire. And then the rest of it was like one and a half of the episodes were Tales of the Empire. And the rest was Tales of the Jedi, really, is what it came down to. So I'm like, uh, is it really what it says it is? No, but it was still really solid. One of those things that's not going to get you into Star Wars. You know, I, it, it gives you more back info. So if you want that, you get it. And it's cool to see. You do see Grievous. You do see, not Tarkin, uh, the blue guy. Uh, Thrawn. Thrawn. You see Thrawn. And you also see Vader and the Inquisitors and stuff. So if you want to see that stuff, it's there. That's where it is. So for me, it's a must see and a must stream. But I think for most people, it's probably either going to be like a pass or, or worth checking out. I think it's at least worth checking out for a Star Wars fan. I did watch Blood of Zeus Season 2 on Netflix with the wife, and um, ha have you seen it? No. So I love when anime does their own spin on not just Japanese stuff, right? Like they go, oh, we're going to do our own spin on Greek, you know, Olympus and that stuff. And so this one focuses on Heron, especially like the, the first season. The second season focuses heavily on... Hades and um who's his wife I always forget um but yeah anyways Hades and his wife that's who it focuses Persephone. on Persephone Persephone yes so she's the one that controls the not the seasons but I think she's the one that like does like the harvest and she, stuff I like, think she's the goddess of spring yeah yeah so because her the mother is the one that's the seasons yeah so yeah she does like she grows flowers and all that stuff but anyways so that's what it focuses on them and how he wants to get be rid of... He's tired of being in Hades because he does, can't be with his wife. And so he's doing a lot of questionable stuff. And it's, it's, it's really good, dude. It's, 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 it's crazy because the thing about anime that bugs me is when you watch it, there's such a huge time gap, right? From the previous season that you saw. And because of that, you forget. And this one helps you remember... And also kind of goes like, you don't entirely need it. Like, this season does a good job of going like, whatever you need from the previous season, we're going to fill you in on. So you can just jump into this season if you want to, pretty much. Or like, you don't have to rewatch the first season. I feel like you'll probably be better off if you rewatch it, but I didn't have to. And so it ended up being a phenomenal season. Some people have said that this is on par or better than X-Men 97. And I say, no way. No way. But I close, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah, no, I'll give you that. It, it can come close, sure. That being said, it's a must-see. It's a must-see. It's a must-stream. Let's just go jump into uh, X-Men 97. Yeah. So, which is pretty much the finale, like the last few, last three episodes, right? Yeah. I don't think those were the only ones we didn't cover. 
Yeah, it was uh, interesting to watch. Uh, basically, uh, it was kind of nice seeing Forge finally with like the rest of the X Men, and then uh, Storm with her powers back, mm -hmm. and of course, there were some questionable choices. Okay, like. I understand Logan wants to kill Magneto, don't get me wrong, but is he really the best person to send after Magneto? I'm going to argue yes for... Well, here's the thing. The thing is there's a meme going around that Scott made him go on that mission because he found out that he kissed his wife. I don't know how he did. But anyways, that's why he sent him. But then when you think about it, that whole fight, Wolverine's the only one that really got one in on Magneto. Like, the, the dude... And I don't know how he didn't detect it with his Master of Magnet. The, the dude that's made out of metal literally came up behind you and stabbed you in the back. Something that's really cool, though, and I think they kind of just did this for... for story. I, I think they do this f to check the boxes of, hey, it, it it's from the comics. Yeah, does it make sense? No, absolutely not. It absolutely does not make sense. Why are you going to send him down there and not, like, and swap him with somebody else, like Morph or Cable even, right? Like, it just or, doesn't make sense. I wouldn't send Cable, but just someone, like, Storm probably would have been a solid choice. <laughs> someone that could actually potentially hurt him. Right. Versus someone that... Could maybe get one surprise attack, if even that. I mean, they were kind of messing him up there for a little bit, and then Cyclops did his thing, which I was like, Wh why? Why did he do that? That confused me. Why did Cyclops shoot Professor Xavier and be like, oh no, the other team's not ready yet. Give him more time. And I'm like, what, what would have been the repercussions if he would have just controlled Magneto? Like, I don't see the problem there with just being like, oh, I'm going to control Magneto and just make him not do anything or yeah. or fix the problem I, I that that's something i was i'm still confused about which is why like it was an interesting turn of events but it just felt like they did it for the sake of for the shock and awe and like oh my gosh and so we can continue it next episode because they had him right like they had him at that point they had magneto so to say like yeah, you didn't really need Wolverine there. Yeah, he got one in on him. And the thing is, the line that he says to Magneto, Magneto actually said it to him in the previous iteration, in, in the in the regular X-Men Taz, right? In the animated series. He actually says that. He says, you know, the braver, the first to go in, in war or something like that. Now, it was like, the phrase was slightly different when Wolverine said it, but it was still really cool. And like I said, they got that moment out of the comics where he pulls the metal off of his bones. And like I said, once again, I kind of feel like they just did it because they went, hey, what happened in the comics? So this is our chance because we're not going to have our chance again. You know, yeah, it doesn't entirely make sense, but it's going to work. And it, and, it, and it did. I feel like it did work out. What are some other issues you had? I mean, that was really the, the main, main one. one. Because I was going to bring up the fact that Dream Grey Phoenix doesn't just kill Bastion and instead she just like repairs the headpiece and then puts it on him which that, that would have been an easy fix I mean I also kind of feel like maybe she didn't have like it's just a momentary control like use like she can't use it all the time she's just kind of like oh sometimes I can use it and then boom that's it I'm done right like that she can't use it the phoenix all the time like I think it's like a literally life or death situation is the only time she can use it, and it's for a very short time period because it, like, burns her out, right? And well, so... Well, that, and it will eventually kill her. Right. And so that's the other thing, too, is, like, they kind of use that as, like, a scapegoat, but it ended up being really solid. I, I've seen people complain that, like, like I said, that Jean Grey didn't kill him, as well as why didn't the X-Men just kill Bastion, too? Like, they were messing him up, and then they had the chance to just completely defeat him and stop him, and... And then they were like, no, we're going to try to befriend him and stuff, which is kind of like an anime thing. And and it's, but it's an X-Men thing. Like, that's kind of like the w whole way he's raised his kids is be like, you know. I wouldn't even say it's an anime thing. I would say it's a Goku thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it is more of a Goku thing. <laughs> Oh, Frieza, Vegeta. Like, there's so many of the villains he's trying to. But anyways, yeah, you're right. So. And then. 
He, I think he goes even further than the X Men do. He's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm about to destroy you, but I gotta give you a lecture on why you are wrong. Yeah. He so, always does that too, Goku. Which is sometimes epic, but yeah. So overall, it was really well done. But really what it comes down to me is the same things that we talked about with the other parts, right? We did a part one and we did a part two. This would be our part three of talking about X-Men, which is the problem is it's too fast paced. That's much too early. Prepare to fast forward. Preparing to fast forward. Fast forward. Fast forward, fast forwarding, sir. I really feel like they should have spread out the Madeline Pryor and then they should have spread out they should have they should have spread out all of it like they should have made even the whole forge that story arc they should have made that multiple episodes as well because the way that they did it they could have packed it into one episode but they should have spread it out at, at least amongst they did end up spreading it out amongst what like two or three episodes and it should have been actually three episodes what they should have done is done like Madeline Pryor should have been at least two or three episodes. The Storm should have been a few episodes. Um, the Jubilee could have been one episode. But I really feel like episode five in all of Genosha, that also should have been its own story arc, and that should have been the finale. Yeah. Be and then this should have been season two finale. Because when you put five up against this finale, I go, I'm sorry, but my emotions... I'm emotionally, like, kind of already cut off. Where, like, unless you kill somebody that I care about more, which, who do you care about more than, than I'm going to spill the beans gambit? Like, who? The, the, what they tried to do failed. Right. They tried to do an emotional impact on the most popular X-Men character, Wolverine. The problem is, they, if they were going to go that effect, they did it too soon. Mm -hmm. They should have waited till the last episode or something right because like it kind of died down before the season died down because you're like oh he's gonna be fine he's just gonna have bone claws now right which right. Ha has already been seen by the public so it's not like super shocking right we saw it in days of future past it is widespread known like that's yeah he has or, bone claws and the uh, comics, of course, but origins. those are hardcores. X-Men Origins. Oh, yeah. So multiple movies. So we know. So, and, and that's what, for me, when it comes, it comes down to writing, which is your emotional climax should also be your actual climax. Because if you try to do an emotional climax and then another climax, and it doesn't top it, it's just, it doesn't come out as powerful. And that's the only problem that I had with this. It's still phenomenal. It's, I still think it's the best thing that's on TV for years. Like, I, to me, it's still my number one right now, like, show, and it will be for a while, but at the same time, it doesn't, it's not without its faults. And so it's not perfect, but I still give it a must-see, must-stream. Yeah, it's definitely a must-see, must-stream. Just wish they would focus on season finales because mm -hmm. the whole focusing on mid-season finales is stupid well they didn't do a part one part two if they would have that would have been okay you didn't give us time between each part you know what i mean like that would have been fine if they would have been like boom this is part one and then give us time and then release part two and then it would have been like okay we were recovered emotionally now we're ready for some more emotionally yeah like uh stranger things type thing right where they it was done correctly and mm -hmm. executed well right perfect example this was not it if you're going to be airing it all at once then focus on a finale and then have a mid-season like shocker or something but nothing to a finale level right i just feel like they're going too fast they're going to run out of material quick and this is really only going to last and at this pace they're only going to last maybe three seasons yeah, Five suppo tops. supposedly Bo said he had planned on doing roughly five seasons. Okay. But we'll, we'll see, because... He's gone. <laughs> he's gone. And he's not uh, dead, but <laughs> he's, he's dead to Marvel. Yeah. They even... Uh, so I watched the making of 
right? Because I've, I've been watching the making ofs, and a lot of them are really well done. Like, the making of Miss Marvel. Like, it just brings so much humanity to it, of the Marvels, I mean. Like, that's a phenomenal one. Like, if you're, you know, a hater, I think that's a perfect thing to watch. You'd be like, these are people, you know? But, well, they're people, but at the same time, Marvel gave an inexperienced director full reins and reaped the benefits of it i thought that movie was phenomenal i've seen it so many times so i still stand by it as like a real it's and i put it up there with one of the top movies of that of that marvel has done period um so but that was awesome too because once again you see the humanity you see the voices behind the characters that was phenomenally well done and so even like i said i would say like both of those are worth the must see must stream so yeah the only thing i don't like is they conveniently took out the main rider. Right. That's what that's that's where I was going with that, which is yes, they, they cut him out completely and I'm like, why? You should have left him in because like I get it, but I also don't. Because it's like fine, don't put him in the season two. But he if he did so much, why did you cut him out? Like that just seems wrong what they did by doing that. That's that's messed up. So screw you, Disney. <laughs> I know it's them. So anyways, yeah, must see, must stream, right? Yeah, must see, must stream. All righty, let's move on. Ghost of Tsushima, director's cut came out on PC. I've been seeing tons of stuff on the Sucker Punch Instagram, and there's so many screenshots that are just phenomenal and beautiful. It's a beautiful game. I kind of want to play it around my kids just because it's beautiful, but it's not going to be beautiful when I decapitate somebody with my samurai sword in a, in a samurai fight, which... The absolute best thing is when you have a legit samurai duel and it turns into the cinematic mode and then, like, he notches his samurai sword and then, like, you're waiting for the other person. You can do these standoffs whenever you want against any group of people, which I don't anymore because I suck at them. But the actual fights, like, oh, man, the way the progression system goes and the way all of it's done, it's just phenomenal and it's brilliant and it's beautiful. I haven't finished the game. I'm almost finished because I'm, like... On all my tales of, it's like 7 of 9 or like 8 of 9 at this point. So I'm almost done. I think I may, might have like one third left of the game. But oh my god, if you have not played this game, you have to play it. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's a single player. But it is just so phenomenal. And it's just... And, and there is a sequel coming out eventually. So... And I don't know how, but I'm interested to see how. And oh my god, you have to play this. As a person who hasn't even finished it mind-blowing game it is absolutely a must-buy whether it's director's edition i mean i just i yeah the wife got me the director's edition i got it late right i got it on the ps4 and i've just been playing it on the ps4 because i don't want to pay for the upgrade because i don't care and because I, I don't want to start all over either from the beginning because i like said i'm so far in the game so absolutely oh, a they strong must bring buy. your progress with you i, I well, i put the game in i think i would have to use my i'd have to move my because it's all on external hard drive so i'd probably have to move it i just didn't feel like do, dealing with the mess of doing all that and i was like i'll just i'll just do it on i'll just keep playing it i don't want to deal with the mess so too much of a headache for me i'm not i'm not as uh as, as strong in you know the gadget abilities as you ambassador <laughs> i suck at that i'm the jack of nerdy trades master of absolutely none of them so, because I just have my, my fingers in too many pies, you know. I barely get a taste of, of each one, and it's mostly the mainstream stuff. All right, let's move on. Kid stuff. Film of the Unicorn on Netflix. I haven't done a video of this yet. I might. We'll see. So this might be my only review. The kids loved it. My girls loved it. One of them's four. The other one's two. And I got a baby. Even the baby was interested. He was turning his head left. So it's kind of hard to feed him, but hey. He needs to be turning left anyways, but I enjoyed it too. Like, there's great voice acting. The animation is phenomenal. Essentially, it's just about this pony, Thelma, and she's just a cute little pony, and she has this rock band, and they kind of, like, do these D&D &D games and stuff, but they are trying to get essentially into, like, whatever... What, what are the... the sh like, American Idol, essentially? It's like kind of like American Idol mashed with Lollapalooza... And that's what they're trying to get, be like the headliners of that, or at least just get into it, and they can't because they're like, you don't have the look and stuff. So something happens where she gets painted as a as a unicorn, and then she just goes with it, 
and she gets sucked into the industry, the bad of it, and and stuff, and leaves her friends behind, not on purpose. And then she's like, oh, you know, I miss my friends and stuff. And then she's like, I just want to go back to doing that. So essentially, what it's about is just sticking to your true self. Don't be fake, even if it takes longer to get there. You know, you put in the work and you put in the time, you'll get there. Kind of like us, where we, I screwed myself when we were reaching the top. And, but we're getting there, right? We started all over yeah. and we're getting there with, with our likes and our subscribers. So that, you know, and then people are helping us get there and we're getting there. So, yeah. So it's definitely worth seeing because the kiddos were sucked in the entire time. There's hardly a home without the Nigma Tech Box. I enjoyed it the entire time. Everybody enjoyed it the entire time. It is definitely a must-see, must-stream. I didn't really want to watch the uh, Pokemon Horizons Part 2 um, series, but I did. And I'm glad I did because it's way better. It feels like they course-corrected. Like, they knew what they did wrong in the first part, and they're like, we're going to fix all of that. And they fixed it, and it went phenomenally well. Like... It's not perfect, but it's just so much better. Like, these new moves that they introduced. I was even like, oh, I've never seen, like, a crystal in form of Charizard. That was wicked cool. So, and then just other, like, a goal, like, what did they, like, a Golar Moltres? And I was like, I've never seen that. That one looks different from the regular Moltres. And I'm like, this is cool. Like, they just did so much new stuff and different stuff. And then me and the kiddos were, like, humming the, the intro-outro music. Like, we got hooked in this one. I don't know what... Like, they were mentioning the names of the care of their Pokemon way more. And it just seemed like a way better progression. We got backstories and a lot of the, like, adult characters was really cool, too. So, it was great. I, I They completely turned it around. And I absolutely loved Part 2. So, I'm gonna have to say that this went... This shot up pretty much from a pass... All the way to like a must see. I, I, I wouldn't even say watch the first part. Just jump straight into this. Let's move into Star Trek to Discovery. Hopefully that fares better. No. <laughs> Discovery just like. The way they. The worst part is the way they advertise it. Compared to what you're actually getting. Isn't very good. They advertise this season finale. As like a send off. But, from what I watch, it's nothing like what they're saying it is. It's not really a send-off. It's just another random continuation. Ra another random story. And the story itself is a little bit ho hokey. Yeah, they're basically... For a sci-fi show that's about science they decided to try to bring in like some type of deity type power which just is pretty jarring to have that in there and then the idea that it just remained hidden for almost 800 years and that uh, no one knew about it around the Jemadar war time it's a little bit hokey to say in itself it's just uh, sad to see where star trek was and where it is now it's not as good as it was it's star trek is supposed to be the happy optimistic future not this whole depressing future in star trek like this earlier star trek series it was basically humanity moved past some of the simple things they're they're more trying to deal with being part of a global community instead of dealing with uh racism and other things like that it's supposed to be gone but they try to bring that in uh with this and it just for me it just doesn't feel like Star Trek and I really wish it would get back to feeling like Star Trek because if you want Star Trek the closest thing you'll get is the final season of Picard and that's it and don't watch any other parts of Picard just the final season <laughs> because the final season 
has the next generation crew coming back together and get to see them all work together. But yeah, it's just, for me, Discovery just wasn't the answer if you're getting a Star Trek edge. I, I recommend just going back to older series if you really want to watch Star Trek. Okay. Alrighty then. So it's a pass for you. Yeah, it's a pass. It's a pass for you, which sounds like you're a hardcore, you've been a hardcore for a long time, and that's where you stand. Now, I'm not super hardcore. As I've said throughout this podcast, I'm, I'm a, you know, jack of all nerd trades. I'm not super deep on everything. There's a lot of Star Trek I don't know. And we've even said in previous videos, I said, I watched the first season, started the second season, and I think I just watched the first episode and I was like, ah, I'm good, I'm out. And then I came back into this one because I'm doing it for the people, for the for the nerds out there, for everyone out there. We waste our time so you don't have to. You were like, hey, you should rewatch all the stuff to get caught up. I did not do that because I don't have the time. This is TVMA, so it's really hard for me to find windows of time to watch it. I've only watched up to up to episode five. I think they're up to episode eight or nine by this point. Yeah, I think it's episode eight they're up to. So I'm sure by the time this comes out, it'll be nine. So anyways, the point is, I was lost at first with that first episode. Dude, I've had a blast with every episode since. Like, I, to me, Star Trek is about inclusion and just having people from different, like different, you know, obviously that look different on our own planet, but these other, you know, these other alien species working together to... And just different personalities, and that's what I that's what I get. Like that's what I'm getting in this. And like it does kind of feel like they are starting something new when it do, it doesn't feel like they're ending something. It feels like they're starting something new. But at the same time, like I said, I jumped in and I don't feel like I have to watch anything prior. And so if you're new, that's perfect for someone new, especially that hasn't watched any any of the other seasons. Like, I mean I watched the first one. I don't even feel like you need to watch the first one. You get more if you watch the first one, especially with the do more time travel stuff. There's a lot of time travel stuff. I, I When you do time travel, yeah, it gets messy. I've loved it. The action is phenomenal. I, I think it's it's like this new, like her new number two is so great. Uh, the introduction of that guy. And I'm so interested to see how this goes. And because but I'm not... I felt a, like the new number two was useless. The uh, I'm, I want someone there to be able to tell me no. But every time he tells me no, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do anyways. Mary, I am out of control. Yeah, I use drugs. I can do what I want, bitch. Yeah, I have sex and I don't use protection. It's my hot body. I'll do what I want. I don't go to school and I kill people. Whatever. I'll do what I want. Defeats the whole purpose. Well, I mean, he does help. Like, he brings something different that does help her from what I've seen. Like, yeah, that is true to a certain degree. But he has issues that he needs to get over, and he's slowly overcoming these things. And I think it's that same thing where, like, with Saru, where he was kind of like he was not that way at the, at the beginning. And then as time, like, they all got closer, right? And that's been great to see, like, even that huge jump to be like, oh, this is so great to see, like, how they have all gotten so tight and everything like that. And then to see like these flashbacks too, or whatever. But you're not entirely wrong. But I do feel like it's it's a progressive thing. It's it's a slow it's a slow it's a slow progression. And I'm like I said I'm liking it. I, like I said I, I'm not a hardcore. I don't know much about like the progenitors and like how there are creators and all this stuff. And and to me like none of that stuff matters, right? Like I don't care. It could I could not care less about past. Star Trek like I I like past Star Trek but I'm not so steeped in it that I'm like screw everything that's new or what they try to do that's different because I'm just like it's new I know and say so it's like the same thing with like Star Wars when they introduce something new and they're like oh how come in the old Star Wars uh, it doesn't explain this it's happening new and it's like because they're altering it and it's not going to like that's just the way it's gonna be like when you introduce something new, it's gonna alter the old stuff, especially like with the timey, whimey stuff. Like it's gonna kind of mess it up, and it's your choice if you want to go like this ruins it for me or it doesn't ruin it for me. Now I choose not to 
if you want to, you, anybody else, that's fine. I'm not saying like you have to get on board or F off. Like, I'm just telling you, like, if you're new, this is probably going to be for you, especially like this new season, uh, which, yeah, it's the final season, but like, it may go like, hey, I should check out the old stuff. Because now once this is over, I'm probably going to do that because I'm having such a good time with this now. And I'm making it a priority to watch it because I'm enjoying it so much. So I love that we have this dialogue, that we're on opposite ends of the spectrum, because there are people like us out there that are on opposite ends of the spectrum. And so people get two different people's opinion. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm definitely not saying I'm right, because I know I'm not right most times, you know. So... But I just know I'm enjoying it. And so that being said, it's not the strongest thing out there, absolutely, but I'm having a blast, so it's definitely worth checking it out for me. It's a pass. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> and we're probably still going to cover this stuff in the future, begrudgingly or not, whether it be Doctor Who or <laughs> or discovery or whatever it is um some more than others obviously right so we also have our anime stuff which kaiju number eight and was that it and uh, kaiju number eight and demon slayer oh and demon slayer of course yeah there's a new demon slayer my wife's yeah. been watching that i'm like i'm not ready for that I, I so i was she did play it and i was like i'm not ready for this i am not caught up you can keep watching it and she was like, all right, get out of here so I can watch it. So tell me about it. Tell us about it. So Demon Slayer's uh, been really cool this time. So basically, the end of uh, the last episode, a big change happened to Nezuko. That big change has the Demon Slayer core terrified. Because basically, something Demon's been trying to do for, since, for thousands of years, Nezuko can do. And so they're worried that that uh, the main demon guy is going to go after her. While that's happening, they decided they're going to try it. Since demons are not having as many appearances as they used to. Because uh, basically they believe the demons are preparing for something bigger. And so they decided they were going to do some uh, training and they're going to have some Hashiras and former Hashiras start training all the regular people in the core. So uh, they start doing the training. And uh, basically, uh, our main characters are getting stuck with it too. Uh, and Suke is he hasn't really been seen as much, unfortunately. Uh, which that guy is freaking hilarious. <laughs> He's probably the funniest character. And then the electric guy has been kind of not as present prevalent, but basically they're doing training. And then the, the main character is still recovering. He basically in the previous season took out one of the upper demons with another Hashira. Once he's recovered, they have him go on and do the training, and he's really showing up most of the, the members of the core because he's done so much. So I, I give it a must-watch. It, it's definitely worth watching. It's not going to be as intense as Entertainment District was. That's probably the best story arc Demon Slayer has for now is an Entertainment District. Okay. Yeah. Here's my hot take about Demon Slayer. I think it's highly overrated. I'm not saying the animation isn't absolutely phenomenal and mind-blowing. It is. I think it was a huge mistake to kill off Rengoku because he was easily the best, most interesting, phenomenal ha um, Hashuda. Yeah. He was so great, and I think it was a huge mistake that they killed him off. Spoiler alert, but whatever. None of the Hashira since... I have not cared a lick about. I'm like, die. I don't care. In fact, not the next one, the entertainment one, like, I was like, die, dude. I don't care. I hate you. Like, you're a jack dude that's way too good looking and you have three wives. Screw you. I hate you. Like, I'm sure in the manga, it's way, he's better and all of it's way better. In the anime, 
didn't I was like, you can die, dude. You can I was rooting for him to die. I was like, don't care. You killed off my number one dude. Not him, obviously, but they did. And I think that was a huge mistake. Because they can't they've never introduced anybody that's at that same level of likability. I don't care. Like I've kind of emotionally dipped out because once again, the emotional climax, y- you you haven't done it. Like I want I want them to, but for that, and and I need to keep watching, but that's why I think it's just overrated because I've even heard going forward like there's still a lot of the Hashiras are not nearly as good as Rengoku like personality wise and and like in, in other stuff obviously like skill of probably yeah that's why he died but that I, that was a huge mistake for me but that's just my opinion yeah the one they introduced in the in the sword uh, the swordsman village she she's really cool and likable okay yeah it's and you, you you start learning more about them because really even Rengoku you didn't care about him until the train. He just seemed like a cool dude, but that was about it. So it's a matter of just learning more about them. Well, I mean you have to I mean you have to make him a I mean he was a he was a his backstory was interesting. He was a very like upbeat character. He seemed like he was like, Hey, I'm gonna train you to be better a lot of them are, like, they're cocky and they're full of themselves, and I don't like them. And I can kind of understand, like, oh, yeah, I understand why you're cocky because you're super great. But it's like, yeah, but we've kind of talked about that, too. Is like, at a certain point, if you're so good, that's why you train people to make them better. You know what I mean? Like, because there's only so high you can go, and that's how you kind of get better is by training people. Let's get into... Uh, kaiju number eight. Kaiju number eight. Yeah, that show's been uh, surprisingly good. First episode was a little slow, but it really introduced everything you needed to know. And basically the main character wanted to fight Kaiju, and then, but he kind of wasn't good enough and failed. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. And lost his opportunity, he believed, until... There's been enough of a kaiju defense force dying that they needed more people. They had to raise the age limit so he could uh, potentially get in. But while they were while he was working cleanup, uh, he he managed to escape from a uh, kaiju. But they were both still really hurt, and so basically they're in the hospital. And then a uh, kaiju goes inside of him. <laughs> And now he can turn into a kaiju. Most kaijus are caught, but they when they found out about his kaiju, his form, well, they don't know he turns into him, but they just know there's this kaiju number eight that's at large that mm-hmm. just shows up randomly and they can't seem to figure it out. And it, what's really cool is once he starts trying to get into the kaiju defense force, uh, he starts meeting other people, and other people start finding out about it too, his abilities too. And then some others have suspicions, like the the co the the co commander of a group he's in knows something's off, but he also enjoys laughing at his oh, failure yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so he's basically just trying to figure out what's with this guy. Mm-hmm. And then the girls. Uh, ridiculously powerful oh yeah and he i think the interaction with him and the girl especially after he saves her life it, it, she's just like okay i'll keep your secret <laughs> but it's always like telling him like why are you doing this that's a terrible decision yeah yeah it's I, i've liked it so i'm not gonna lie it feels like an attack on titan to rip off at first where Kind of like Ed and Yega where he becomes a Titan. Like it feels like like that, but it's current times. I even thought where they were using ODM gear at first, but they don't. Like they're on foot or like they'll yeah. do like a uh, rooftop traveling kind of like the Ninja Turtles or whatever, you know, or or Daredevil, what have you, right? Yeah, they have power suits. Right, yeah. And so the way that they, yeah, it's like this character is brought in to, because they're like part of the cleanup crew of kaijus that's what the main guy is and there's a new guy joins and he inspires the old guy to be like hey man you should try out again like i'm here because i want to try out and we should do it together 
And that was really cool because he looks up to him and, and like they help each other out and stuff. Yeah, and he's like all stressed out and he's like, I got to keep his secret. I got to make sure he doesn't use his powers. And I love it too because the ladies in this are the most powerful people by far and large, like easily. And it's funny that like the dude has to essentially become a kaiju to even like be that level of powerful, you know, like so funny. But it's funny enough that the characters, they change and they're unique and like they just like their different power levels and stuff. And man, it's gotten super intense, super quick. And I love it. And the animation like is goofy sometimes. And sometimes it's like really awesome and hardcore, you know, like I love how it fluctuates it's not quite chibi mode, but, like, it is definitely, like, kind of, like, you know, feel like taking at least dipping a toe in that, you know? Like, and then, because sometimes he looks goofy and then he looks really hardcore. And so it's really, it's just super awesome and interesting. And then the backstory, too, of it, I yeah, I'm loving it. And it is really, it's really awesome. One thing, too, that's really funny is, like, yeah, that one chick that's the new, she's new and she's the blonde girl. She's, like, super powerful has some daddy issues and he's totally filling that void because he gives her, he gives her that, you know, like when she kills him, Hey, good job. And like, it's what she wants from her real dad that she never got. And because he's an older guy, but not like super old, right? Like he's not actually the eight of her dad, but he's like what, 34 or whatever. So everyone calls him the old guy. And yeah. And I can relate to that too. Like starting to get like up there, like, you know, around that age and I'm like, yeah, I don't know, you know, but still trying to be fit and, like, do stuff that the young guys at work are doing and stuff. Hey, my peeps! <laughs> What's crack a <laughs> Yo, find the fist bumps. Come on. All the way out. Yeah, and et cetera. <laughs> Is that your Ferrari on the sidewalk? True that. It, I love it. It's it's a blast and it's phenomenal and it's separating itself from stuff. It does, like I said, seem like an Attack on Titan clone at first, but it's starting to separate itself really quickly and really well. And and that's why, for me personally, I, I give it a must-see. Yeah, it's a must-see for me as well. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to cover the June 2024 nerdy releases. You can find them on our website. You really can't find them anywhere else. Trust me, I know. I've looked they're all in one place. As much anime, gaming, nerdy shows, movies, everything right here. That's where you're going to find it. The first, we have Black Clover Season 3 on Netflix. Then there's Strawberry Shortcake's Summer Vacation on Netflix. I'm going to check that out with my girls. So that's why I threw it on there. Boruto Naruto Next Generation's dub on Hulu on the first as well. Then for the second, My Adventures of Superman Season to episode three so we already there's already i think one episode out or two um now we we should have covered that but they announced that like super late so that's why we are not on top of it that's on max and the fourth is star wars the acolyte two episode premiere on disney plus also there's going to be destiny 2 the final shape on pc ps 4 5 xbox series xs1 uh life by you pc early access Star Wars Hunters Mobile and Switch, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, The Game, PC, PS5, Xbox XS. On the 6th, Baki Hanma vs. Kengen Ashura on Netflix, Sweet Tooth Season 3 on Netflix. On the 7th, Doctor Who Episode Rogue on Disney+, Plus. School of Magical Animals Number 2 in Theater. On the 9th, My Adventures with Superman Season 2, Episode 4 on Max. On the 11th, The Acolyte, Episode 3 on Disney+. Plus. V Rising on PS5. The 12th, Mysteries of the Terracotta Warriors on Netflix. Go Go Loser Ranger Series Premiere, dub on Hulu. I assume that's an anime. On the 13th, Bridgerton Season 3, Part 2, Netflix. I just throw that out there because... I guess it's time period priest, kind of nerdy. A lot of people are into it. Um, my wife's going to check it out, and I know there's a lot of people that do. That's why I threw it on there. Uh, on the 14th, The Boys Season 4 on Amazon Prime Video. Doctor Who, The Legend of Ruby Sunday on Disney+. Plus. Ultraman Rising on Netflix. 
Inside Out 2 in theaters, Blood Free Complete Season 1 dub on Hulu, and then Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance on PS5, 4, PC, Switch, Xbox Series XS, and 1. On the 16th, House of the Dragon Season 2 Max. I really don't want to watch this, but I'll do it for the people. I, I, I'm over that stuff. But anyways, uh, My Adventures with Superman Season 2, Episode 5 on Max. On the 17th, there's Mission uh, Yozakura Family Series Premiere Dub on Hulu. 18th, The Acolyte Episode 4 on Disney+. Plus. On the 21st, Doctor Who Empire of Death on Disney+. Plus. Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC, PC, PS4, 5, Xbox Series XS, and 1. On the 22nd, Rising Impact Season 1 on Netflix. 23rd, My Adventures of with Superman Season 2, Episode 6 on Max. On the 25th, The Acolyte Episode 5 on Disney+, Plus. Super Monkey Ball, Banana Rumble on Switch, 26th, Cockdo, Season of Deity, or yeah, Season of Deity, Season 1, dub on Hulu. On the 27th, Supercell, Season 1 on Netflix, Unicorn Academy, Chapter 2 on Netflix. I'll, I assume that's for my kids, so I'll probably watch it. Then Luigi's Mansion 2 HD on Switch. On the 28th, A Quiet Place, Day 1 in theaters. And Horizon, an American saga in theaters. Spy X, Anya, Operation Memories on PC, PS4, 5, Switch. On the 30th, My Adventures with Superman, Season 2, Episode 7 on Max. So we'll see how all that goes. Yep, we'll see how that goes and check out what we can. All right, cool. Thank you for watching and checking us out. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Uh, check out our merch. I'm wearing the Doctor Who uh, lettering with the Doctor Who TARDIS. We have other Doctor Who stuff. Um, this is actually was a prototype, so I've actually dragged it down so it's it's not so high up. So now the lettering is like more like right here, and then the the TARDIS is going to be right here. But um, and then I'm wearing rocking my Asul Beetle all print, um, not leggings. What do they call them? Joggers. Uh, which I, the all print is always the w way to go. I, they're probably not on the site, though, because we only have 100 items. But if you want it, we can hook you up. We can get them for you. And you're sporting uh, the periodically nerdy shirt. Which is just, it's nerdy. Periodically, yeah. obviously. It's hilarious and brilliant. Which is so fitting for the ambassador. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? Let's do some shout-outs, too. I got some shout-outs for the peeps. For that, always at the top of the list... We have Atticus. Atticus. Uh, and then we have, um, which is, he's a YouTuber and he's just raw and, and, and real. And he's a teacher out in Vietnam. And, but he also just does slice of life stuff that's, that's really interesting, really great. You know, what it's like to have relationships with friends, uh, you know, people of the um, r romantic relationships, even people of the opposite gender of your own. Or whatever, and uh, and and it's so cool. I love just seeing it because it like the land is just beautiful. Like it's it's so cool to see. Uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde is another one that is great. Uh, they do comics like online comics, and they're great. And every it seems like every post they make is so inspirational. So I love their stuff. Uh, film Rage, those guys are hilarious. They cover all films. Doesn't matter. They will cover all of them because they, like us, will waste their time so you don't have to. And uh, Mary May Media, which kind of sounds like what it is, which is anime, media, um, and a little Americana, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, Superpower List. Those guys are awesome. Hardcore comic book nerds. Talking nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth.